Would you stand with us today? Let's put our trust in Jesus this morning.
Come on, he's worthy. Let's praise him. Amen. Are you thankful that Jesus paid the debt for your sin? Amen. I don't think we think about that too often. I think we often feel like we deserve the grace of God. Maybe not consciously, but subconsciously we think, you know, I'm, I'm a pretty good person. I, I do a lot of good things. I don't sin very much. But every one of us are sinners. All have sinned. All fall short of the glory of God. And every one of us are saved by grace because God chose to reach down and pull us out of our sin and save us from it. That's worth praising God for. Jesus told a story in Matthew about a king who, who wanted to settle all his debts with his servants. And he had a servant who owed him 20 years worth of, of wages. No way he could pay him back. So he said he was going to sell him and his family to pay for the debt. The man knelt before the king and he pleaded, please forgive my debt or be patient with me. Give me time to pay it off. The king had mercy on him and he forgave his debt and set him free. But that man left from the presence of the king and he went and he found a fellow servant of his who owed him about a day's wages. And he started choking him out. He said, give me the money that you owe me. This is in the Bible. Jesus said it. And so he goes from being forgiven a debt he could never pay to demanding a, a small debt out of a friend of his. The king found out about it, and he tossed him in jail. We've got to remember that Jesus has forgiven us so that we can forgive others. Let's not take that grace for granted and keep it for ourselves, but let's share that with the world around us. I think that's so important for us to remember how much we have been forgiven of so that we will forgive others in the same way that Jesus has forgiven us. Let's pray together this morning. Jesus, we do thank you for your grace and mercy, all that you have done for us. But God, we pray that if there is unforgiveness in our hearts, that you would wash us clean that you would help us to see the ways that we can share that grace and love with the world around us. We are your church. We are your hands and feet, your representation on this earth. So God, there are so many people around us who are hurting. There are so many people around us who need to hear the gospel, the good news that Jesus Christ loves you and he can save from your sin. He can pay your debt. God, help us to be the ones who share that grace with the world that we live in. In Jesus' name, amen. We have a uh, scripture from Ephesians that we are reading through the month of July. It is still July, right? I get confused. <laughs> so go ahead and put that up there, Annika, so we can all read it together. Ephesians 6.10, Finally, be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the schemes of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers over this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. You may be seated. Good morning. My name is Kimmy Barnett, and for those of you that are in person with us this morning, and maybe you're joining us online, we are just so glad that you're here with us today, especially those that are new. Church, let's welcome our guests this morning with a big round of applause. If you are new, maybe this is your first, second, or even your third time with us, if you could just take a quick moment and fill out the In Touch card, you can find that right in front of you in the seat back pocket, and you can drop that off as you exit the worship center this morning. Our ushers will be holding an offering basket that you can put it right in there. Giving is an act of worship. We have different ways that you can give this morning. We are going to continue to suspend our in-service offering just to minimize contact. So if you brought a gift with you today, you can drop that off in the offering basket as you leave this morning. Or we have two ways to give online. If you have the Venmo app on your phone, you can pull that up right now and find us at Cross Community Church. 
or you can go to our website, which is crosscommunity.cc, and click on the Give Online tab. I'd like to encourage you, if you haven't done so already, to stop by the welcome desk as you exit service today and check out these very cool cross-community car decals. There's a better picture on the screen there. Very colorful stickers. Uh, you can put this on your car, at the back of your car, or any window for that matter, and help spread some cross-community love in Palm Beach County. The cost is $3 for one or $5 for two. In a little over a week, not this coming Wednesday, but the following Wednesday, we are going to have a midweek church-wide worship service. This will be a short service. It's just going to last one hour. We're going to have some praise and worship, a time for prayer, and we'll hear a short word from Pastor Randy. All of our community life groups, our Emerge Youth Group, and elementary age kids will be joining us in this service. So bring your whole family and mark your calendars Wednesday, July 29th at 7 p.m. We will have child care for those that are four years old and younger. Over the last few weeks, we've been hearing from different missionaries. They've been providing us an update. These are missionaries that we both prayerfully and financially support. Missions is very important to us here at Cross Community. This week is no different, so if you would, turn your attention to the screen for a short video from the Gibsons. Thanks. Hello, Cross Community Church. Greetings. For those of you who have not met us, we're Chuck and Lori Gibson with the Jesus Film Project. It's been nearly a year since we were last together, and to say that there's been a lot of changes since then would be a vast understatement. But God, that has been our favorite phrase this year, but God. He had many different plans for us and our ministries because Jesus Film is a media ministry with many digital strategies to bring the gospel to the nations. We quickly changed course and began shifting all of our efforts to resourcing to digital training and resourcing. We're asked to lead two weeks of global seminars. We uh, were an organization called Indigitus. Um, and so what we did was we trained people from all over the world how to use our resources to have online conversations um, that led to spiritual conversations leading to gospel decisions. So it's from the bottom of our hearts that we want to say thank you, Cross Community. If it wasn't for you, we couldn't do what we do. Um, if it wasn't for your prayers and your partnership, um, we just couldn't do it. So we really want to say thank you, we miss you, and we can't yes. wait to be with you again. Until we meet again, God bless you. Bye-bye. Bye.
Don't go, don't go, don't go, amen. Excuse me, please, don't go. Don't go one more time. Let us, let us worship God this morning. Can you sing that again? You want to sing it again? Oh, yes, let's sing it one more time. Amen. You know, I'm tired when we're praising God and everybody's sitting down as if God's supposed to be dancing for you. I'm tired to see us when we're worshiping God and we just sit as if we want to look cute in the presence of our King. Can you stand up? Let us worship God this morning. Amen. You don't need to touch each other. You don't need to do that, but we can still worship God. Amen. If you don't know how to dance, I will show you how to dance. not because we're better, we're good, because you have forgiven us. That is why we can call you Abba Father. That is why we can come boldly to your throne of mercy. It is not because we're better, it's because you're great. And we thank you today, God. We magnify, we exalt your holy name today. Thank you so much the choir, the songs, uh, writer and singers, we bless the name of the Lord. Can we just raise our hand this morning and just tell him thank you for dying on the cross for us, for giving us this privilege and opportunity to, be, to come unto him, to know that it is not by might, nor by power, it's because of his love for us. His forgiveness is not a free thing. It cost him his life so we can be free. And today we rejoice. We're excited. We're happy because he gave everything for us. Father, we love you. Your forgiveness is the only thing that we can hold on to. We hold on to this because through your forgiveness, you place us where we never dreamed that we will be, to be accounted as the children of God. We thank you, we love you. In the mighty name of your son, Jesus, we thank you today for those that are weak in their body. We pray, O oh Lord, that healing virtue from your soul, God, will go through them right now. People are weak in the house, they are, they are in the hospital, whether they belong to our church or not, Father, we just pray. 
during this time of COVID-19, oh God, we ask you to just go and touch everyone, those people that they've lost their loved ones. During this time of bereavement, Father, we ask you to touch them, strengthen them, be the God of comfort to them. And we ask you, Lord, let the word of our mouth that will come towards them honor you, glorify you, and elevate them from the pit of burial right now and bring them to the loving kindness of yours. We thank you, we praise you. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Can everybody say amen? amen. Can you say amen again? Amen. Can you say one more time amen? amen? We thank God today. We praise the name of the Lord. You may be seated, people of God. Thank you for being obedient. Standing up when I ask you to stand up, you have the choice to say no, and there's nothing I can do about it. Amen? But we thank God we are family together. We are, we are here to just continue to enjoy the presence of the Lord. Please, let us keep on doing what the government asks us to do to have that, um, what do they call it, distance? Whatever they call it, and use the face mask. To, to protect yourself and protect other people, amen. Let us take one minute to pray for our pastor as well. It's because he's not here, I'm here. So for me to be able to come back, let me pray for him, amen. I'm just kidding. He's a loving pastor, amen. Father, we thank you right now for our pastor, for his love for us, for the kindness that you put upon him and his family. Father, we pray for your abundance of blessings upon his life upon their family, upon their marriage. We pray that peace that pass all understanding will continue to engulf, envelop him. Touch him right now. Let him have a good rest. Oh God, I pray, oh Lord, when he come back to be rejuvenated and be able to just give us more passionate words that will draw us towards you. We thank you, we praise you in Jesus' name for him. Amen. Today, I'm not going to take too much time. That is what the preacher always said. But I'm going to come quickly. The Word of God is coming from the book of Ephesians, I mean, of Philippians chapter 2. And uh, amen. I think you see it out there. Amen. Let me see if I have my glasses with me. That is good sometimes. It's going to be from the book of Philippians chapter 2, verse 1, all the way to 11. In this word of God, today is just, I title it, Be Christ-like. It's just a word of encouragement from the man that wrote almost half of the uh, New Testament, Brother Paul. This is the church that he started when he goes to Macedonia, and actually, uh, the Philippian church is the first church that Paul started in um, Macedonian area, which is in the Asia uh, Minor. Because he was going to one area, and the Spirit of God, he had a vision that a man said, come to Macedonia and help us. And he heeded to the Word of God, and he went into that area. The first place is Philippi, and uh, he met some nice people there, and he started a church in the house there, and the church developed. It's like his firstborn. But do you know that in every church we do have crisis? And people said, I want to go to a perfect church. I say, well, when you find that perfect church, let me know. As soon as I get there, it's not going to be perfect anymore. There's not a single perfect church because in every church is you'll find something that is common there. What is it? Human being. And everywhere you find two people, there will be imperfection. Amen? That is the uniqueness that God has given us because we are not equal. We, uh, our, our, our differences, we look at it as if it's a bad thing, but our differences actually strengthen one another. But in this church in Philippi, they have crises as well. Even though Paul the Apostle has tarried and he has worked with them, they know the heart of Paul, but they're still struggling with something. Even in my own house, my wife and I and my children, we do not get along all the time. Clean your room, those children refuse to clean the room. 
What are we going to do? Am I going to kick them out of the house? No. They are my children. Guess what? My, what my mother will be saying too, clean your room. And I will not do it on time until I get spanked. This is the spanking that Paul is trying to do now. He's sending them a letter, even though the letter is a very encouraging letter, but at the same time, it's a corrective letter. And we need to have that once in a while, someone that loved us so much that he will not look above our mistakes and let us go astray, but he will come and correct us. And at the same time, when he corrects us, he draws us to himself again. So today, I want to encourage you, if we want to be like Christ, which that is what all of us desire to do, that is why we call ourselves believers. That is why we call ourselves Christ, I mean Christian. We want to be Christ-like. So there's some behavior that we need to change, or there's some things we need to learn, because it's forgiveness that we just finished singing about. That is what really draw us to him. So follow me with this word of God today. Therefore, if there's any consolation in Christ, if any comfort of love, if any fellowship of the Spirit, if any affection and mercy full, full, fulfill my joy by being like-minded, having the same love, being of one accord and one mind, let nothing be done through selfish ambitions and con or conceit, but in lowliness of mind, let every, let each esteem others better than himself. Verse 4, let each of you look out not only for his own interest, but also for the interest of others. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ. Who, being in the form of God, did not consider it robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, taking the form of bond servant and coming in the likeness of man. And being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even the death on the cross. Therefore, God also has highly exalted him and given him the name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, of those in heaven and those of and of those on earth and of those under the earth and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of the Father of God the Father Father we thank you let this clay be decreased and you increase right now touch your people God let their heart be a heart that will receive your word, and you, God, will bring increase in the name of Jesus. If we look into the word of God, if we, because the, the beginning of this uh, 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 verse one talks about something that we need to realize that is a connection or, or connecting point from what is said in chapter one. If you can project for me, chapter 1, verse 27, 28, 29, and 30. I'm not going to spend time there, but I just want to say this in verse 28, and uh, verse 29, actually. It says, for to you I have been granted on behalf of Christ, not only be, uh, to believe in him, but also to suffer for his sake having the same conflict which you saw me in me and now here in me. Paul the Apostle is telling the people in Philippi, he said, 
I've been around you. When I was with you, there's some things, there's some behavior that you've seen in me. But I suffer in Christ. And not only that I suffer in Christ, there's some things that you have seen that I have gone through. And this is the main problem we have. We always believe that leaders of the body of Christ don't suffer. It's just like the children will think the parent, they always, everything is hunky dory wonderful. They suffer. Parents have to go out to fend for food, to so bring the money in so they can take care of the children. The pastors, everybody will suffer, especially when we suffer on behalf of the gospel. Do you know that the gospel is the good news? Even though it's a good news, but it's a very heavy load to carry sometimes, majority of our pastor does not even have good friends. Amen? Because we don't even know. Some of us, we don't even have pastor friends. The only friend we have might be members, and the members bring their problem. And they expect the pastor to resolve it. But Paul the Apostle is saying, in Christ, when you are in Christ, you will suffer for something. But don't worry too much because that suffering is not a bad situation. Because there's a lot of things that is going to go on in the body of Christ, but I assure you, Christ will take care of you. He said, if there's any consol- if there's, uh, uh, in chapter 2, he said, therefore, if there is any consolation in Christ, you know you're going to go through some crisis. Because I don't come to church so people can t- beat on me. I want some consolation. I do not come to church so people can kick me around. I want somebody to lift me up. So Paul is saying all of the things that I'm telling you that is going to happen in the body of Christ, I'm going to tell you there's something good that will happen at the end. If there's any consolation, if there's any comfort of love, if there's any fellowship of, in, of, of the Spirit, if any affection and mercy, I want you to know in all of these things that will happen in the body of Christ, I want to console you, I want to give you comfort, I want to give you the affection that you need in the Spirit. Fulfill my joy by being like-minded, having the same love, being in one accord and one mind. If you want to see any good work, you want to see the joy of the Lord working in your life, you want to see the blessing of God working, one thing we have to do together is we have to be of one mind. What does it mean by being of one mind? There's another passage in the Bible that said, Let this mind be in you as also in Christ Jesus. What does that mean? It's talking about your attitude. Let the attitude of God, of Christ, be in you. Let the the work of the Lord walk through you. Let you become epistle. You become the gospel to others. They see the joy of the Lord in your life. They see the love of God in your life. They see the care that you project towards other people. The reason why you have those things is because God has come into your heart and you have received him as your Lord and Savior and you are now transformed by renewing of your mind. You do not look at people the way you see people anymore. You see them as Christ sees them. May I stop here for a minute because I, I, I believe I'm talking to only believers today. And I don't want to rob any of us from our blessing. So let me say this. If you have not given your life to the Lord, if you have not accepted Christ as your personal Savior, this is the right time, this is the right place. Because you will walk out of this place not only be a child of God, and not only that you will become the one that I'm about to talk about today. Because your heart will be melting and you will see the joy of the Lord. You will see the care of God and God will start to do something great and marvelous in your life. So if you have not accepted the Lord as your Savior, I'm going to give us only one minute. 
right now to just where you are. You can raise your hand. I will lead you to the Lord and we'll continue with the word of God. If you have not accepted me, or maybe you have backslid and you say, you know what, I'm coming back home. This is the right time because God is about to do something in your life because this word today is for the people that they have received, accepted, and they are working according to the will of God. If there's anyone like that in the name of Jesus right now, raise your hand. Let us pray for you. If there's none, I will continue. Amen? Amen? Amen. To God, we thank God. To God be the glory. You all save and sanctify. Amen. Amen. Now, it's going to get a little bit harder, but let us take it the way it comes. Amen. The Word of God is saying here, Paul is encouraging every one of us so we can see what God can do. And he said, all of this consolation, all of the comfort that I'm going to talk to you about but you cannot receive it if you are not of the same mind. In the, one of the greatest books in the Bible, the book of Ecclesiastes, King Solomon wrote something. He said, how can two walk together and do what? And I agree. If two people are walking together and they do not agree, you know they're going to be scattered, running away. But if they unite, they can conquer. And another passage, you said, one can do something, but when you are two, when one fall, the other one will. So there's a power in unity. There's a power in connectivity. There's power in togetherness. So Paul the Apostle is saying in chapter 2 here, he said, fulfill my joy. I want to see the blessings of God in your life. Fulfill my joy by being like-minded, having the same love. That doesn't mean that somebody that likes squash is going to be someone that likes pork. Some of you, you're vegetarian. I like to eat meat. Amen? That doesn't mean that we will not love each other. That doesn't mean we will be against each other. You know, but the love, the common love of God will be in every one of us that whatever the difference is, is still going to be a strength to every one of us. He said, let this mind be in you. He said, having same love, being of one accord, being of one accord, being of one accord, coming together, realizing that we are one with peace. <sighs> Serenity. You went to work all day. You spent about 10 hours there. Your supervisor drives you crazy, and you still need the job so you didn't say a word. You came to your own home that you're supposed to have peace of mind, and you're walking, it's still chaos. This is our home. As a body of Christ, when we come into this house, we're supposed to feel love. We're supposed to feel un unity. We're supposed to feel like-minded. And if we don't feel that way, that is why we sing song that will bring us together. Because when we're singing the praise unto our God, guess what? We forget our problems. We forget our sorrows. Our mind is open to the King of kings and the Lord of lords, and he opened his hands, and by the time you realize it, you forget about your job that you work six, eight hours that is not the right one. And God said, tomorrow go there again. I will do a new thing in your life. Why? Because you have come together, and when we embrace each other as the love of Christ, and we are in one unity, one accord, and look at the last one of one mind. That's the second time or the third time he said that. Because when we are of one mind, something happens. 
You don't care about what other people said anymore. You're caring about what God is about to do because your heart belongs to God. Your mind belongs to God. You're doing the will of God, and God is now ready to do something because people don't see everything that you used to do anymore. They see what is in your heart. Because out of the abundance of the heart, what happened? The mouth speaks. People see the way you project. People see what is going on. And verse 3 says, Let nothing be done through self-ambition or conceit, but, be, but in lowliness of mind. Let each esteem others better than himself. First of all, the problem that we're having today is, I think I'm better than everybody. And everybody always have an ulterior motive for everything. Oh, yes. And don't you tell me that in the body of Christ, you're not like that. My wife told me a long time ago, so why are you always thinking it's self, you, 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 all the time? I said, because it's always me. <laughs> when I was born, I was yelling, ah, ah, and they put the bottle in my mouth. That is what we call King Baby, King, King Baby Syndrome. Yeah, we just cry and everybody jump and help us. But it's not going to be like that because... When you have ulterior motive, you're not thinking about other people anymore. It's always about you. But in the body of Christ, it's not about you. Actually, it's reversed. You have to consider others before you. Somebody said it so well. They said, when, if you're looking for joy in Christian world, you have to put Jesus first, then others, and yourself the last. And the, the, the key there, if Paul is saying you want to be united, you want to be Christ-like, you have to put Christ first. And you have to prefer other people first. And don't you ever, may I underline this to every believer today, don't you ever think because you prefer others first, you are now denying yourself. The devil is a liar. Let me let you know the strength that you have in giving yourself a, 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 in sacrifice for others does not take away who you are. You are who God said you are. Amen? And because you prefer somebody does not take away your house. That does not take away your car. That does not take away your position. You just prefer them because you said, I want my brothers and sisters to be blessed. I know I'm blessed already because my blessing cannot be diminished or taken away by me preferring my brothers and sisters. And that is why Jesus Christ in the book of Matthew, Mark, and all of the uh, four epistles, he told his disciples, if you, if you want to be great in this kingdom, be the servant. If you want to be a leader, you serve. And people don't want that because they always want to prefer themselves because they have, everybody always have an ulterior motive to be better than others. He says, it's not about being better. You are better already. Once you know that God is in you, you serve the Lord, Savior, Jesus Christ, you are on top, you are not believed. Amen? So you don't worry about, you, what you need to do now is pull somebody up to your level or push them above you so they can pull you up later. He said, prefer others. And not only that, he said, but in lowliness of mind. Let each esteem all the better than himself. There's a secret in leadership. There's a secret in a, a lot of areas that when you prefer others and you push, even let us start from home. I have bachelor degrees. I have master degrees. I told my children I cannot read anymore. 
and it's not because I, I don't want to, but I'm lazy to be cramming books now. Let me just enjoy and blossom in where I am right now. So you have to go beyond where I am. And I'm looking for all of my pastors that they are young to push them to doctorate degrees. Because the day is coming that they will pull me because when they're paying their tithe, they're paying their tax, I will be able to get my pension. Amen? That's, a, that's, a, that's always an inside thing there. When you push people forward, it is not that you're looking for something from them, but you will gain something. This is the reason Paul the Apostle was able to write to the people of Philippi. And in the chapter 4, chapter 3, you will see how he blessed them. Even in chapter 1, he told them they are one of the, they are actually they are the one that they have supported him in this journey. In chapter 4, he told them that the God that he served will supply all their needs. Why? Because they have supported him, they have sent money to him, and actually he's telling them all of this because he's building them up so they can continue to do the right thing. But if we turn away and push people down, we discourage them in the body of Christ, we turn them away and send them back to the world, how are we going to be blessed in the body of Christ? That is why every one of us in the body of Christ, we have to come together, we have to have same mind, be on one accord and push each other to excel and do something great in the body of Christ. Chapter, uh, verse 4 says, listen to this. Let each of you look out only for, uh, let me see. Let each of you look out not only for his own interest, but also the interest of others. He said, he didn't say, don't look for your own interest. Because sometimes we read the word of God in a very bad way. He did not tell you not to look for your interest, but he said not only for your own interest. When you're looking for interest, when you're doing the things for the kingdom of God, you're doing it because you can only give what you have. So you are doing what God asks you, but while you're doing what God has asked you to do, think about others so you can get them in, into that thing. But we're getting to, in, in, into a, never, a very nice place now. Okay, just give me a few more minutes, we'll be done, okay? Verse 5, this is, the, this is where the rubber made the road here, because he's going to talk to us about how we need to treat people in Christ, because the example of Christ that he has set, he said, let this mind be in you, which is also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God. Listen to this now, this is Christ now. He is in the form of God, did not consider it robbery to be equal with God, is in the form of God, is son of God, is the, one, is the second in control of the whole world. He did not consider it robbery to be like God, but he did something that is different that every one of us, we don't want to do. But made himself of no reputation, Taking the form of a bond servant and coming in the likeness of man. He is the king of kings. He said, the king, the, the, my kingdom is not of the earth. Actually, when they were trying to arrest him in the garden of Gethsemane, he told the people, he said, I can easily tell my father to release angelic warriors right now. And he will send 12 legions. But for the word of God to be fulfilled, he know who he is, but he obeyed everything so me and you can be saved. With, because the Bible says without the shedding of blood, there's no remission of sin. That is the focus of Christ from day one from when he came to this earth to fulfill what God asked him to fulfill on the earth. And he continued with that. He does not even count his robbery to equal himself. When he was in front of Pilate, Pilate said, you know I can release you. He said, no. Say, so you think you have power? The only power you have is the one that was given to you by my daddy. 
You see, one of the problems we have nowadays is this. Has anybody watched this movie, a long, Eddie, movie, Eddie Murphy movie? Uh, it's, about the, it's called Trading Place. Do you see that movie, Trading Place, a long time ago? These Wall Street people, they took this black boy. They, they said, you know, let's, let's part, you know, make him work for us. We make money and we see. And they took him to a very nice house. They told him this house belongs to you because you have to show the part that you are working in this area. And they took him to that house, and guess what he's doing? He's trying to steal everything in the house. After they told him the house belongs to you, you cannot steal what belongs to you. Can somebody say that? You cannot steal what belongs to you. The kingdom of God has been given to you because you belong to Christ. There's no other thing that you have to envy anybody about because God has given you the key of eternity. The problem is, do you recognize it? We, we have a um, Cory Ten Boone. Cory Ten Boone says something so wonderful. He said, uh, uh, Cory Ten Boone said, uh, God in his forgiven power, he took away all of our sins and threw it into the pool or to the pond of forgiveness. And then because God knows our behavior that we'll go back and fish out of it, he put a big sign there and said, do not fish. It's a human nature that we always regard, we go back to the things that we understand. But Paul the Apostle is saying to the people, he said, Jesus Christ knew who he is and he doesn't care about what other people think about him. He, because he knows that he is God, he lessened himself as a human being so he can fulfill the thing that he needs to do. And likewise, as a believer, we need to know who we are and as long as we know who we are, we can do whatever God has given us to do. Why? because it is not what people say about you, it's what God has said about you. Can somebody say amen? And if God tells you that you are whole, guess what? I don't care what is ravaging your body, you are whole in the name of Jesus. If God said that you are healed, you are healed. If God said you are delivered, you are delivered. God doesn't matter what the doctor said, because you heard the word from God, God will fulfill every word. He said there's not a single letter of his word that will not fulfill what he accomplishes to do. And God will make it happen. And in verse six, uh, 7, listen to this. He said, but made himself of no reputation, taking the form of a, uh, of a born servant and, and coming in the likeness of man. Verse 8. Listen to this. We're almost there. And being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death. Even the death on the cross. Nobody wants to die nowadays. But do you know that something, we're not talking about physical death. We're talking about dying to our pride, dying to our selfish ambitions, Dying to some behavior that is not godly. Dying to addiction for God to take it away from us. And one of the things that really hinder us from getting to this area is our mind is not made up yet. Even though we are believers, but we're still, we're still suffering from releasing ourselves completely, totally, unto God. We're still depending on our own power, our own ambitions, our own intuition, our own education, believing that we have everything, but we don't have anything. Peace of mind is not there. But if you trust God, if you love God, if you let go of those things 
God is willing and is ready to take you and I to a deeper depth in him. And another thing that we have a problem about is we like to show off. We like to tell people I'm the one who's doing this. Someone told me a story a long time ago. They said during the cold weather in the north, I don't know if the birds talk to each other, but said these two birds are telling each other that we need to go back to the south. It's still warm over there in Florida. Let us go to Florida. And while they were talking, a turtle heard them talking. They said, oh, I would like to go to Florida too. Can you take me with you? These two birds said, well, unfortunately, you cannot fly. We cannot take you. Uh, he said, well, there's a, always a way. I will find a way. Then he came back the next day. He said, if you put a stick on both of your neck, I can hang with my mouth on that stick, and I'll, you know, will fly. He said, they said, well, that's pretty good. And guess what? They did it. It worked pretty good. But on their way coming, there's a man who saw this ingenuity of this bird. And he said, man, this bird are so smart that they were able to carry the turtle with this stick. But the turtle did not want the two birds to get the glory. He opened his mouth to tell the man that it's my idea. Guess what happened? There's some time in our lives that we don't need to let people know whose idea is because it comes from God. We just have to give God all the honor, all the glory. I do this a lot in my house. I'm sorry, I have to, this is my confession time now. You know, for me to even say thank you to my wife, I don't say thank you. Uh, she knows how to get me, though. I'll say that thank you more than once later. But the key there is sometimes we need to always look at what God is doing. And we need to know that it is not by power, nor by might. It's not because we're smart, but because God has given everything for us, and we need to give everything to others. You know, as I said earlier, it is not because you're giving to others that reduce you. Actually, it embraces your potential. It embraces your power, and it gives you more courage that you can do more. Why? Because you are planted in other people's life. Paul the Apostle is showing the, Philippi, uh, the Philippians that if I plant in your life, you will become great, and you can do more work than I alone can do. And if you look in the book of First, or first and Second Corinthians, actually, especially Second Corinthians, is telling the the, uh, the Corinthians. He said, "I want you to save money." And that is what Paul always do. He always tell them to save money so they can send it to the people that they are poor. Paul cannot raise all of those money, but he can gather the believers so they can be able to bless other people. Lastly, 9, 10, and 11. There's something here that we all need to understand. Once you gave your life to the Lord, God has put you in a place that nobody can take you down. Can somebody say amen? amen. Listen to this. Therefore God has also exalted him and given him a name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow, of those things in heaven and of those things on earth and those under the earth. And listen to verse 11, that every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. If God did that to, for Jesus Christ, and Jesus Christ is the one who brought us to, to, Christ, to God. He's the connecting rod. And that is why in the book of Revelation, the Bible tells us that every one of us, God will give us what? A new name. 
I don't think my name will be Alex in the, that day because we have a lot of Alex. I don't know what the name is going to be, but I'm glad I will have a new name. And I'm glad you will have a new name. And that name is not going to, is, it, uh, your new name will not embody your past experience. Because in the book of, of uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, towards the latter part of verse 51, 50, all the way to the end, it talks about in the twinkling of an eye, when the trumpet of the Lord shall sound, every one of us will, will be quickened, those people that they are dead already, and those that are still alive, they will be caught up in the air. You will be transformed that this body will not be the body anymore. God will give us a new body. That new body will come with a new name. Amen? Because when God is calling the dead out of the grave, it will not be a duplicated name. It will be a specific name for each one of us. And Paul the Apostle is telling them the reason why is because God has given Jesus Christ a new name. He has given him a new power. He has given him the authority that he deserves, and because he has it, you that you believe on him as well, you will have the same thing. Can somebody say amen? amen. You are not alone. You will never be alone. I don't care what is going on in the world right now, because you trusted in the Lord Jesus Christ, he will never leave you, nor will he forsake you. Because he is the King of kings, the Lord of lords, he will always be there for you. Why? Because he is the Lord that serves the glory of his Father. And I want you to know something today. When you prefer other people first, when you love people, when you care for people, when you do the will of God, God will do the best for you. Can somebody say amen today? Amen. Two or three things that I want you to do for me this week. I want you to love people starting from home, especially those people that they are very unlovable. Amen? I'm one of them. Amen? There are some people that they cannot even smile. Have you ever been around, you walk in, I mean, this happened to me all the time, I always check myself, maybe something is wrong with me. I'm, I'm serious, I'm walking and somebody look at me, they, they just intently looking at me and I get to them, I say, good morning, they just, I say, man, something must be wrong. Then I start realizing maybe they are not looking at me, maybe I'm the one looking at them. But because of that, I still have to say good morning, at least to acknowledge them that I see them. Those people, take your time this week. Say hello to them, whether they answer you or not. Don't be upset. Next day, say hello, because you are the gospel of Jesus Christ. You are the good news. Whether you like it or not, people are looking at you, they're shaking you out. And I, I don't care how you feel about it, you are the water that quench the thirst of others. You are the salt that season and preserve other people's life. You are the light that brings beauty and lightning in the darkness. You are the one that Christ is using for right now to change the course of other people's life. This week, if you can't find any, be one. Be the one that will touch other people's life. Be the one that will change somebody's joy, sadness into joy this week. Be the one that will speak life to somebody that you don't need anything. You just want to touch them and say, the Lord will bless you this week. And if they're struggling, take time. Not everything that people need is money. 
but they need your time. And guess what? Your time is money as well. But guess what? Somebody took their time for you. We used to sing a song, and we're going to pray now. The song said, somebody pray for me. Help me on their mind. They took their time to pray for me. I'm so glad they pray. I'm so glad they pray. I'm so glad they pray for me. My mother prays for me. My grandmother prayed for me. They took their time to pray for me. I'm so glad they pray. Right now we're going to pray. I know we cannot come to the altar, but I know every one of us today we have a desire, a need. And I believe the Lord God that we serve, as the Word of God told, uh, spoke to us today, we have to be a like-minded. We have to be in one accord. We can sit down where we have, we don't need to hold hands before we be in one accord. But in our mind, we can connect with the Lord Jesus Christ right now. That our mind will always seek the things to bring honor and glory to God. If you need anything where you are tonight, today, just speak in your heart because God knows your heart better than I do, way better than I do. He knows your struggles. He knows what you really need. And where you are, can you bow your head, the eyes closed. Let us pray that the power of God will come and envelop every one of us and touch every one of us. Even the fear of our life, that's questionable things that we're going through. God, we touch everything today. Father God, we thank you. We thank you for your love for us today. We thank you because it's only in you we live, we move, and we have our being. Without you, we can do nothing, but with you, all things are possible. Father, we commit ourselves to you today, God. You know everything that concerns us. You know the terrifying situations of our life, things that bothers us. And you have declared that whatever that is given unto you, you will no wise cast out. We give everything to you today. We plead the blood of Jesus over our situation, Lord. That you take control of every step. Father, don't let our ways block our blessings. Father, we ask you today to touch us by the power of yours, God. That you, O oh Lord, will be lifted up. This week, we ask you that your blood will cry for us. As we go out this week, you will bless us. Oh God, as we come in this week, you will protect us. Father, we pray that our household will not lack in the name of Jesus. As we're doing for others, Father, we know our family will never lack. Father, we pray for our church, family, God, that you continue to bind us together with the cord of love, the cord that can never be broken. We pray, O oh Lord, that you continue to be with our leaders, O oh God, be with our pastor and all of the officials of this church, God. The elders, the prayer bands, oh God. The ushers, the workers, oh God. We pray that you touch everyone, our children, God. Protect them and guide them. Our elderly uh, members, God, we pray that you protect them, oh God. During this COVID-19, Father, we pray that your angel will be dispersed and camp around every one of us. That at the end of everything, we will glorify you that the Lord has done great thing for us. We thank you. And your name will be given all of the honor, all of the glory, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, we pray. May the blessings of the Lord be upon you. May his glory shine upon you. May his kindness continue to follow you everywhere you go. 
May the joy of the Lord continue to radiate upon you. When you go out, you will be blessed. When you come in, you will be blessed. May he continue to show his love concerning you and all of the people that relate towards you. Wherever you go, may you become the water and the salt and the light. May the joy of the Lord continue to enrich you. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of his Holy Spirit rest, rule, and abide, and give you peace in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Can we sing our way out of here? Hallelujah, God, above it all. Hallelujah, God, unshakable. Hallelujah, you have done great things. Sing that again. I believe we have a birthday in the house. Is that right? Is Patty here? Is she in the room? There she is. So let's just sing to her. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. I heard there's cake, too. I don't know. There might be cake outside, but make your way out. Enjoy fellowship outside. Have a great week.